We often think of the 20th century as being the century that has shaped contemporary Jewish life. And due to the events of the Holocaust and the establishment of the modern state of Israel, this is indeed a, a truism of, that, of those experiences. However, it really was the 19th century or the late 18th and then 19th century, often referred to as the long 19th century, that truly shape the kinds of choices and identities that modern Jews now inhabit. And I'm going to give you a two to three minute introduction as to why that is the case. This quotation is quite a famous one and it comes from a very uh, famous debate that was undertaken in the French National Assem Assembly in the immediate aftermath of the French Revolution. Count uh, Clément Tonnerre was trying to make the argument that Jews, along with, by the way, actors and executioners, an interesting combination, should be given full French citizenship according to the, the spirit and the laws that had usher, been ushered in by the French Revolution. So if we read that first sentence, we must refuse everything to the Jews as a nation and accord everything to Jews as an individual. It's okay. Sorry. Why don't, you, why don't you just go from so uh, from the start of the quotation? Why yeah, you, I like, can do that. So, okay. Uh, so look maybe from the point of saying looking at the first line of the quotation. Perhaps. Okay, yeah. great. Looking at the first line of this quotation, we must refuse everything to the Jews as a nation and accord everything to Jews as individuals. We can start to get a sense of what Count Clement Tonnerre is arguing for. He sees the spirit of the revolution, including Jewish citizens, in all of its promises in terms of individual citizenry, but also individual citizen responsibility. So if we go on and read just a bit more, we must withdraw recognition from their judges. They should only have our judges. We must refuse legal protection to the maintenance of the so-called laws of their Judaic organization. They should not be allowed to form in the state either a political body or an order. They must be citizens individually. Now, at first, this sounds a little bit negative, perhaps. But actually, if you think about the situation of Jews in pre-revolutionary France, indeed, in, in the similar time period across West Central Europe, they were not considered citizens of their nations, by and large, for hundreds of years. So this actually was an enormous opportunity for, for West and Central um, European Jews. And what it meant was that it was the start of what we refer to as their emancipation, their ability to live as citizens with equal rights in the countries in which they resided. So what were their gains? They gained the ability to own land. This was something that was not uh, generally admissible for Jews prior to the modern period. They had the ability to live among the general citizenry. Many of you may have even visited the old Jewish quarters of various European cities, sometimes still referred to as the Jewish ghetto. These were places where Jews were, had to live according to the laws of their land. Emancipation meant they could live anywhere. The ability to work in any non-traditional professions. Prior to modernity, Jews often only had, were allowed to work in specific um, professions. And many of these professions had to do with money lending or trade. And hence, a lot of stereotypes and negative stereotypes of Jews grew up around these um, professions. The ability to study and learn skills outside of traditional structures. So Jews were now allowed to go to places of higher learning, to join guilds. And this was an enormous change in terms of their potential and what they could do in society. And then, of course, there's this idea that that's ushered in by the revolution of a shared humanity, or at least we might say a shared citizenry, that if Jews indeed wanted to embrace the citizenship of their countries, they would be considered equals um, among their fellow citizens. So these are obviously huge gains, but there were also losses. So emancipation restricted certain aspects of Jewish identity that were taken as a given beforehand. And the first is group identity. If you think back to Tonnerre's quotation or his statement, 
Uh, what he's saying is that actually this group identity must be supplanted by a national identity, and that national identity must be French. So too for German jury, so too for English jury. So if you wish to become one of us as a citizen, you must become one of us in terms of your national identity as well. Now, for Jews, of course, this isn't a problem in the sense that they did consider themselves to be French, to be German, to be English, but they also considered themselves to have a group identity, what is often referred to in Hebrew as Klal Yisrael, the community of Israel. Now, when that was wanted to be retained, they were often charged with this idea of dual loyalty, which, of course, doesn't have to be the case because one can belong to multiple identity groups. But in 19th century Europe, this was not often accepted. So there was a loss and there was also a suspicion that was uh, attached to this. They also lost a lot of their cultural and community authority. In, pr um, prior to the modern period, disputes such as divorce, marriage, um, all of those kinds of personal issues were largely decided by the rabbinate. To become full members of a modern state, one had to give over this kind of authority to the nation state. And this was something that Jews had to negotiate in the 19th century in a variety of European settings. And finally, the very idea of religious identity was challenged because for Jews in the pre-modern period, religious identity was simply part of a total identity. It wasn't um, sectioned off in the way that, say, we would understand it now in modern society. So the modern period was when one could and did become what was known as a Frenchman of the mosaic persuasion or a German citizen of the mosaic persuasion or indeed an English Jew. So you see a sort of bifurcation of religious identity that also had to be negotiated. So was emancipation good for the Jews, we might ask? Well, yes. In, in its totality, I think we have to, we, we come down, if you like, on the side that, mo that modernity was and is a wonderful um, period for the Jews. They have pr progressed and developed in ways that would have been unheard of prior to the modern period. But what it meant was that in answer to the Jewish question, and by the way, the Jewish question predates the Nazi period. We often think of it as part of the Nazi period because the Nazis, of course, were looking for the final solution to the Jewish question. But the Jewish question predated Nazism by a good 100, 150 years. And that question was, how will Jews become integrated into the modern world, and in particular into the modern European world? And for Jews themselves, they will, in a sense, approach this question in three main ways. Some will reject Judaism, and they will become what we call assimilated and simply become part of mainstream German, English, French, etc., etc., society. There are others that will reject modernity itself, and they will become part of what we could now call closed communities, largely Hasidic sects who keep to themselves even though they do still live as part of the modern state. And then finally, and this is the majority, of course, of Jews, will find what I've called here a middle way, be that um, through becoming uh, Jews who identify as, say, German citizens, but their religious identity is a reform or progressive Jewish identity, or perhaps they will have an orthodox, or what's called a modern orthodox identity that was also something that actually, most people don't realize this, but developed in the modern period as a reaction or a response to the Jewish question. Some will indeed develop a nationalism of their own and they will become modern secular Zionists. Um, and others will find cultural identities or other forms of Jewish identity that can coexist in the modern world. So the question that I want to leave you with is that not so much the Jewish question as it was classically defined in the period that we speak of, but rather a question for us as we look back at that history and we see its connection to contemporary Jewish identity today, which is, is the modern Jewish experience best understood as a gradual process of secularization, i.e. are we losing our Jewish identity? Or rather, has the last 200 years been a recasting of an ancient religious, national and cultural identity within the framework of the modern world?